right, what is going on? I hope you all can hear me okay. I literally just switched my headphones like at the last second. So I hope you guys can hear me okay. We are back talking Marvel. We had about a three month window of no Marvel content. You know, we got to Spider Man No Way Homes of the World. We got our Hawkeyes of the World. And now we're back in the MCU with a brand new hero by the name of Moon Knight. And I'm here with my amazing co host to break down this first episode. We're going to theorize, we're going to have a great discussion, talk about what's working, what's not working. And of course, interacting with you all with the return of an MCU show. So happy to be back. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the channel. My name is Elliot. Again, we love Marvel. We love DC. Uh, loving this last year that we've gotten with Marvel with shows. And again, we got a full slate of shows to look forward to. And this is the first one out of the gate. So with that being said, if you're watching live, I appreciate you. Make sure you're liking the video, sharing it, and leaving your thoughts in the comments. Pros, cons, thoughts, theories, everything in between. Enough of me rambling. It's time to bring in the two most amazing people that I had such a fun time breaking down these Marvel shows with last year, talking movies with Marvel and all the fun stuff we've done here. I'm so happy to have them back. Starting off with this young lady here who is representing up north. Uh, so excited to have her back talking. Uh, Oscar Isaac, I know she's a big fan. I know she's a fan of Marvel, too. I'm so excited to hear her thoughts on this first episode. Amanda, what's going on? Hey, it's so good to be back. It feels so good to have an MCU show and to talk about it with you and Chris. So I'm stoked. I'm so excited, man. It's been, like I said, it's been three months. And, and throughout that time, you know, we've gotten some DC projects, the Batman, mm -hmm. Peacemaker to kind of hold us over, but we're back in the MCU yeah. and we have a brand new character, Moon Knight, to explore. And uh, I'm really excited to explore this character with you all, Amanda. Yeah, I, I'm obsessed. I knew nothing going in, and now I'm obsessed. Yeah. So <laughs> We are here, Amanda, and I'm so excited to have yeah. you on. But again, if this is the first time people are tuning in to the channel and, and seeing you uh, for the first time, why don't you let them know who you are and where you're at and what you do on the internet? Yeah, of course. Well, I'm an entertainment journalist and film critic. You guys can always follow me over at AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I have my Moon Knight review on YouTube over at Candid Cinema and uh, my website, candidxcinema.com. I do reviews, recent movie news. I'm always rambling about something on Twitter. This week was a bit crazy, so that was always fun. And uh, I have more BS coming up soon. So uh, yeah, you can find me there and here and everywhere. <laughs> Amanda, you said there was some some crazy stuff going on. Did did I miss something? Did did something happen recently? Or I uh, like just something. The, well, minor. the Oscars, right? The Oscars, yeah, the Oscars. Yeah. Like, yeah, just a little, you know, thing happened. Okay, just small thing. No, nothing big. Must... Like, I don't even know who won. Like, it was just such yeah. a mess. Yeah, I'm, I missed it. I, I I have no idea what you're talking about. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> there, guys, you heard Amanda again. Not only does she do video content on her wonderful YouTube channel, uh, she has her website. She's always just supporting the community, whether it's you mm -hmm. know being on this stream, other people's streams, and just being an awesome person. So I'm so glad to have her back and talk about this character, Moon Knight. But we are a package. We have started this crew. We do this tradition that the Ace Crew, as we call it, and uh, it wouldn't be the same without this gentleman here. And I'm so excited to have him on. Not only does he cover movies and shows, but the man has jokes for days. The man is just an awesome person overall, and I love his take on the MCU. And I'm so excited to hear him and talk about this show. I'm talking about the one and only Chris from Taste Take. What's going on, man? Gang, 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 gang. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? And we are back. We are back. It's almost like uh, the Nets, right? We got we, we now we got Kyrie. We got you know KD, and we're just waiting for Ben Simmons. You know, but once everything comes Keep together, waiting. you know. Keep waiting. <laughs> as a as a disgruntled Knicks fan, I'm happy to say that we have a better record than a LeBron James led team. So like, it's crazy. Yes. It's this is crazy. I know it's not no MCU news, but that's 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 just crazy. Look, man, I feel bad for Brian, but uh, hey, we don't win them all, Chris. But speaking of winning, we are winning with this panel. We are winning with Chris and Amanda. And Chris, man, if you want to let the fine folks at home know who you are and when they can find you. What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm Chris from Tate's Take. I know we got some regulars in the chat who've been holding us down for all the shows we've been watching. I see Rim, I see Cass, a lot of people that just come back every time. So I want to give you all a shout out. But if you are new and if you don't know who we are, I recommend giving a subscribe uh, definitely to Amanda. I know you know Movie Files. You know E. Um, I'm at Tate's Take. I cover movies. I cover TV shows. Just try to give you a little background on the content um, so you always get a little nugget. You always get something to take away. Um, and then I just give you my take on it to let you know whether I think it's worth checking out. Uh, I think I need a couple more to, to get to my little mini milestone of 5,000. So maybe if I get some from the chat, I think I need like eight or seven or something like that. So if anybody wants to subscribe and watch some movie stuff or some TV stuff, 
now is the best time to do it. Um, maybe the five thousand person gets like a T-shirt. I, I wonder if I can find out YouTube. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, shout out to you guys. I'm excited to talk about Moon Knight. Hey, he put out the call to action. And, and uh, listen, guys, do yourself a favor. If you're not already, follow not only Amanda, but like Chris said, get him uh, over that 5,000. Of course, Amanda killing it right now. I, I saw your, your Bridgerton review. I haven't watched uh, Bridgerton, but I just saw the passion and the energy you had. The same with Chris. Yeah. I know you covered it too. So, hey, Love guys, Bridgerton. subscribe to them. Follow them. Show some love. A lot of but, Bridgerton uh, hate, though. A lot of, a lot of, a I lot saw of that. Like I said, At I first, I thought I it was love, it. but then yeah. it's a lot of hate. Because like I, I think it's it's clear to say that season one is better, but it doesn't mean that season two is whack. But it seems like people yeah. are thinking that it's kind of whack. Mm. Exactly. I'm well, surprised. I mean, just to kind of hear your thoughts quick, man. And just what, what have we been watching before we get into Moon Knight? You know, besides Bridgerton, what other projects have you guys seen and got you excited for and all that fun stuff? Oh, man. Honestly, I took a break after the Oscars because I watched yeah. like Drive My Car, The Worst Person in the World. I rewatched some. Yeah. I was trying to do that. And then like I, I took a break. I actually rewatched Bridgerton season two because I'm like, I need just something loving and calm <laughs> that I already watched. Um, but there's really like honestly nothing else. I'm literally waiting for Morbius. Moon Knight is just absolutely fantastic and I love it. So I've been chilling. Nice little yes. break from Oscar season. It is. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. you need those breaks, especially when we cover so yeah. much context as we do. So, yeah, I definitely hear you. Chris, man, what about you, man? Any new shows you've been checking out? I know you're always keeping me up to date with the Netflix stuff, man. Yeah, no. Uh, there's no breaks. I don't know when people take breaks because, like, <laughs> you're just always something to watch. But, honestly, of course, I'm on Atlanta. I've been waiting on that show. I didn't. I can't believe it's been four years. It's crazy, but man. Been, been, uh, they, they, they impressed me with the first two, so I'm, I'm really excited to keep that series going. I fell off winning times early, but I'm, I know that's fire. I get I got to get back on that. Um, besides that, I'm about to start Woke Season 2. That's the Hulu joint. So I, I, I really like that first season. So I'm going to see if that second mm -hmm. one brings the heat. And then my little hot take, which no one's going to watch this or no one has watched this on Netflix. This is a show called Tyler Henry. He's like the psych. He's the Hollywood medium. And he really does mm -hmm. like, talk to like the dead for the Hollywood people. Mm -hmm. So he has a new Netflix oh. show. It came out like two, three weeks ago. But he's not talking to celebrities anymore. He's talking to the people who are on his wait list because everyone he got so big, his wait list went from like ten to like three hundred thousand. So he went and oh picked and chose a couple of people from from that list of just non celebrities that just mm -hmm. want to get a reading and like connect with their loved ones. So like whether you believe it or not, like it's just an interesting watch. So like it's it's tough to not believe it because there are a lot of things would have to be you know whatever. But I think it's very mm -hmm. very interesting because if it is real, it would be the craziest thing on TV. But nobody's talking about it. Just me. What's the name of? I don't, have, I don't think I've ever heard of it. It's called yeah. Life After Death. But you heard, you know Tyler Henry, the, the medium. He's the um, Hollywood. I think I've seen like, him a couple times. Like, yeah. The Kardashians oh, kind of yeah. put him on because he was on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. He predicted like the whole like Tristan Thompson thing. All that shit's crazy. Oh, wow. um, but he's very he's big on E. He's <laughs> he just on E. Um, but then now he's doing his show on. He has a Netflix show. This is his first Netflix show. This is the first season. Mm -hmm. A couple episodes, quick, easy watches. But it's just like yeah. the most fascinating, like some like heartbreaking stories. And it's like you know. If you believe it, then it's reality TV, but it's just like it's not mm -hmm. trashy, it's just like uh, uplifting, like it's a good little show. Okay, I might, I mean, uh, now that that always fascinates me the kind of mediums and you know, life after death. And I mean, this is a perfect mm -hmm. show to have that conversation <laughs> with, as far as yeah, you know, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. all that stuff, but yeah, I have to check that out, man. I mean, this it's so much, like you guys said, Chris. I mean, there's so much. I, I've I was talking to a man and Chris off screen, it's my mind is all over the place from Morbius to Atlanta to uh, horror film I watched yesterday. Yeah. But look, watching, all that's put to the side. You're watching Severance. You're watching everything. Se yeah, oh, like, bro, I mean, se you're killing listen, it. Just a quick little PA announce, PSA announcement. If you don't have Apple TV+, Plus, first off, it's one of the best streaming platforms Go out there. That. Like, they have – quality is, like – not all the shows work for me, but they always appreciate the quality. Mm -hmm. There's a show called Severance. Uh, quick synopsis is a program. It's a company that hires people and they're like super secretive about what they do. So they put a chip in their head and they go to work and they all they know is work, just work life. And then when they leave work, they don't know what they did for the rest of the day. So it's super fascinating. Ben Stiller's directing it. Uh, wow. Adam Scott is in it. I mean, it's, if you guys have Apple wow. TV plus, give it a watch. It is fascinating. It's a very good thriller mystery. Highly recommend it. But we're not here talking to Apple TV. We're not here talking Netflix. We're talking Disney Plus and the return of Moon Knight. I want to start with you first, Amanda. Yeah. This Moon Knight character. Mm -hmm. Ever heard of him? Interested in him? Read of comics? What was your kind of ex expectations for this character starting with you? 
So I knew absolutely nothing. Uh, when they announced the character in like the show, I had no idea who he was. And then they cast Oscar Isaac and I'm like, I don't care what, who this character is. I don't care what it's about. Oscar Isaac is coming to the MCU. So that really yeah. sold me. Um, but I haven't loved a character like this since Captain America. And that's wow. okay. Like I love Steve Rogers so much. And yeah. I feel like, He's a very complex character as well. And mm -hmm. obviously Stephen Grant, Mark Spector, the whole gang, they're really complex and I'm really interested about the lore. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited to explore this character. I want to read the comics too. Same. Uh, yeah. That's how invested I've become in Moon Knight. So yeah, from nothing to like, I need to know everything. Ooh, yeah. I love it, Amanda, because you, you, me and you both, we, we love Cap. And the same, you know, I know, yeah. um, you know, especially Chris, he loves a new Cap and particularly uh, with Mackie, but <laughs> I'm <laughs> right there with Cap. you. There's only one guy that's, that's very true. But I'm right there with you, man. And this is a character I was very, I was vaguely familiar with the character. I never read an individual run with Moon Knight, but I've seen him like appear in some of the Avengers like crossover events. So I kind of knew the base of the character, but mm. wasn't too familiar, like like a Cap, like a Spider-Man, like some of the other characters, a Black Panther. So it was all kind of new to me. But same question for you, Chris. Were you familiar with this character? And what was it that kind of really caught your attention when you kind of heard who was cast and what it was about? What was really the thing that kind of hooked you to be interested in the show? Yeah, well, one, I'm the same as Amanda as far as didn't know anything about the character. And I don't, I'm not like an Oscar Isaac fan. I don't watch the Star Wars thing, so I miss all that. But, you know, I'm looking at his stuff now. Of course, uh, doing X-Men, Spider-Man, uh, Annihilation was like a nice little sleeper pick. So I know he, I know he, he's been in a lot of stuff that I like. But to me, the trailer really kind of caught me because like I just have blind faith in, Mar in, in Marvel and Disney to like bring me good content. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they gave me a fire trailer. So I was like, I know that this is going to be legit. And like for you to make it legit with a character that pretty much no one knows unless you're like really into the comics, then like I I really have like just faith that you're going to hold it down. I mean, and to that point, man, I mean, this is the first and just going back to last year, WandaVision, you know, we met the yeah. kids, we met this is the first like, unknown. Vision. This is the first unknown, which just gets of, me so excited. Of more that are coming that are mostly unknown. Exactly. But even like someone like She-Hulk, yeah. it the Hulk's in the name, so you recognize that even the name She-Hulk, but then like yeah. there's a lot more that's coming like like even like well Miss Marvel like but even that trailer, I was like, I, I'm not, I wasn't moved by that trailer, and I didn't, I don't know that character. But Moon Knight comes, and I'm like, okay, like this looks like a real movie. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better yeah. myself. Again, I'm I'm so excited to explore this other side of the MCU, and and starting with you, Amanda, just kind of first mm -hmm. impressions before we break it all down. Expectations were they met? Were they exceeded? Were they you know just where you kind of anticipated? What were your first impressions after finishing this first episode? Well, first and foremost, I was glued to that screen. I felt like uh, I just fell in love with Stephen Grant as a character. I was just so interested from the beginning. I, th I thought the camera work was great. It just felt really different, unique. Uh, it didn't really follow. If I say this, it's like it didn't really follow the MCU formula. I know, oh my God, there's a formula. I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> that I'm saying it, but hey. Um, but it's, it just feels different. It feels fresh from the camera work, the direction, the acting was spot on. It's not like Oscar Isaac has to grow into this role. He just became this character and we'll get into the other situations. But I think the one word that I can use was that I was very impressed with this and I'll get into like how I feel about the structure of everything, but it's impressive and unique and I love it so much. You said some big stuff there. Uh, unique, uh, you know, different. This is, uh, you know, there are some familiar MCU things that we can see, but it is something a lot different that I can definitely agree with you there. And the same question I have for you, Chris, in regards to where you were hoping the show would land and what we got from the first episode and just first impressions. Yeah, first impressions, very, very impressed with episode one. I would have gave it five stars out of five on Tate's take. Um, I, I love this character steven like this nerdy like this museum guy that's like just like just can't get can't get it right at his at his job but like i love people are, are, that are passionate about things like that like those kind of people that are like obsessed with things like I, I love those kind of people so i was obsessed with that character and and of course like not knowing like really what's happening like we, it's by design that we don't really know exactly what's going on they gave me a lot of vibes like the mask like whatever happens when the mask is out it's like whatever. Yeah, you got to figure out the next day. Like, if I got that girl's number as the mask, 
it's on me to try to put the pieces together, which my man does not. <laughs> um, but I, I got a lot of that that kind of vibe. I know I was reading some stuff there. They, they're looking for like that Indiana Jones type of feel. Um, and you get that, too. And I'm sure you'll get that as, as the episodes go on. But, yeah, very, very impressed with that first episode. I, I know I watched a little bit of some reviews and they said that the first episode and maybe the couple ones weren't as good as the first. But I'm wait to see for myself. But um, so far, yeah, so good. I love it. I love it. This is going to be so fun. Amanda loved it. Chris loved it. I thought it was <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was all right. I thought it was yeah, all right. Yeah. I think uh, for me, and we'll get to it. When, when, when we break it down, there was some moments that I just wished, uh, again, and this is, I need to just stop listening to the creators and Kevin Feige. I, I didn't get that brutalness that they were kind of alluding to. Again, I know mm. this is the very first episode, but I was looking to kind of get it's more early, into the grittiness early. of it all. And uh, I know, Chris, you say you liked uh, uh, Steven. No, I love yeah, Steven. I love you Steven. Loved, I'm sorry. I love Steven. I love Steven. Because it was like what what I thought that 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 Aww. Wonder Woman 84 mm -hmm. was supposed to be. Like like that kind of character where it's like you're this nerd and then you turn yeah. into this like beast. So mm -hmm. like that like nerdy, like just that like dweeb. It was just kind of like sad that they were like that they treated him that way. And like they yeah. like I was like, if this dude really knew that much, they would let him be the like lead the tours unless he really has like more problems. And I guess we'll uncover that later as we go. But yeah. um I was like, yeah. Look, St Stephen has to grow on me. I'll just say that. He has to grow yeah. on me. I love Oscar Isaac. I'm just, and again, this is what I mentioned about seeing some of that MCU-ism. To me, he seems like one of those kind of, he fits in that kind of jokey, you know, tone mm -hmm. in regards to, because I know from Stephen, from the little bit of knowledge I know from the comics is, you know, everyone compares Moon Knight to, to Batman. He's the, Stephen a, is, a, is a millionaire in the comics, right? So he has a much different yeah. personality, has more, you know, uh, uh, more confidence in himself. So I, I, it's going to take me a little bit to kind of get used to Stephen, but again, Oscar Isaac, I trust. Uh, but speaking of Oscar Isaac, one of the things that really got me excited for the show as we kind of get into the discussion here, Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke to me is one of those actors that he is very meticulous about the jobs that he decides to do, and particularly movies, but let alone he decided to do a TV series with this new character. So that alone intrigued me. And we opened the show with Ethan Hawke, Amanda, as Arthur Hero. Mm -hmm. This routine of a sorts, uh, very interesting, uh, but also you can just get to see. You guys don't do from... that in the morning when you get up? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I keep the, the glass out of the shoes. That's definitely yeah. for sure. But this character here, Amanda, what were you just, to, and again, I love when we meet a villain, because that to me speaks so much volume in regards to, he's not going to just be a throwaway character. We're mm -hmm. going to, we meet him first. Your thoughts as we meet Arthur Hero, as, uh, played by Ethan Hawke. I love that we opened with him because it just sets the tone of what we're getting ourselves into. It's intriguing, especially with obviously the tattoo that we see is like, what is that? Like, what's that going? Like, what's that going to lead to in the episode? You see his cane, everything like they're very um, particular things that even throughout the episode you'll catch on to and Steven catches on to. So I thought that was really interesting. I absolutely love Ethan Hawke, as you said. He picks such unique roles, but the fact that he just took this script without even reading it and said, yes, I'll do it for the MCU says a lot about yeah. the direction that he wants to go in. I honestly think whenever an actor like that takes on a role like this in a comic book film, they just want to have fun. Right. They want to be able to explore right. these villains and in, in these characters and... I was blown away by Ethan Hawke in this episode, but that to start off with the song choice for mm -hmm. him and then seeing everything happen with him. Um, yeah. And definitely intrigued. And I can't wait to see more of him. Chris, man, same for you in regards to number one, are you a Ethan Hawke fan? Uh, and then seeing Arthur hero meeting him. And you mentioned the whole glass routine in, in the shoes, uh, which I'm still baffled by your thoughts on this intro to this, uh, this new villain of the MCU. Yeah. I will say that I like the intro because if you just turn this intro on, you wouldn't think you were watching Disney. Yeah, so that's I did sure. respect the intro. Mm -hmm. I don't, as you guys, well, maybe just Elliot, I don't know if Amanda feels, but I, I didn't love Ethan in the whole episode as I, you know, as you guys didn't, or, or you, you didn't like uh, Steven. So I was like, I don't know, like if I was believing this character to be some, this epic little, you know, like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel scared about it. But as far as we're just talking about the opening, yeah, I did like the opening, and I was like, okay, like, because no matter what, you're like, this is, it's very intriguing. Like, the shows haven't started, this, you know what I mean? Like, Loki's uh, opening was was good too, but I was like, this is like, you don't know where this is going. 
So I, I like that they caught me right away. Am I an Ethan Hawke fan? Of course, like I think everybody is. Yeah. But um, I just gotta see more of this guy because I'm just like, did they just did they just cast this big name and mm -hmm. throw him in this role just because he's the big name, or is, or like, or am I gonna believe him as we go on? That's a good point, man. Again, I think as Amanda said, I think uh, with Ethan Hawke, uh, he's he's very meticulous about the roles, and I think he definitely sees something in the character that uh, will will definitely have the mm -hmm. crowd excited. And I think just and we'll get to it a little bit later, but just like his his ideology and what he believes in and who he follows and stuff like that is very intriguing to me. And just his look, very you know, kind of you know, the, the followers he has is they're drinking the Kool Aid. It's just like a, mm -hmm. a very interesting character, and I always like those interesting characters, especially when we intro into them. But I know you guys like Steven, so let's go ahead and talk about him. As we meet our villain, we meet our hero uh, in Steven Grant. And as you all mentioned, he's a very mild manner, kind of keeps himself. And hey, Brave, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I'm sorry I'm running for night there. But we meet Steven here. And Amanda, just your initial impressions on, first of all, it took a while for me to kind of, I saw the accident in the trailer, but I'm just like, I got to get used <laughs> to it. But <laughs> your thoughts on meeting Steven Grant, did you immediately just fall in love with this character when you saw him just, you know, see this morning routine? you know sleeping tired and people his boss is a jerk why, why are you a jerk to steve yeah she is super I think, <laughs> she is honestly i think he's just oddly relatable and i think that's why i i was so interested in him but i was even more interested how they they opened this episode with like the ankle brace on the bed post and then him yeah. going to like the tape and all of that so i'm like this is going to be a really interesting character and to kind of watch that unfold um that's what drew me to him but he feeds his goldfish, you know, he's going to work, he's calling his mom, like, it's just, it's really relatable. And I think, and grounded, considering everything else that happens in this episode. So in this show alone, I feel like there's such a good balance of like, the mythology being tied in with just a regular Joe getting like sucked into this world and, and into the situation. So, um, yeah, I, I like the day in the life of Stephen Grant. Stephen and, Grant. uh, yeah, his his boss is mean, but I also think oh, going back to the, <laughs> I know going back to the humor aspect that you did mention, for me I feel like Stephen is naturally funny because he's like just quirky and and clumsy and reserved, whereas I feel like in other Marvel projects the humor is kind of like pushed upon characters, mm -hmm. and it's like we have to make this person funny and they punch it up a bit and all of that. Where I feel like with Stephen it's like natural. Maybe that's just Oscar Isaac taking the material and working that magic. I don't know, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's just a difference in tone comedy wise. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you because I, I totally agree with you there where they force a lot of the comedy on some of yeah. the characters that should be a little bit more serious vein. And plus, when you have a Steven going against someone that's not as goofy or as whatnot, it plays a lot better than having everyone having a joke. But yeah. it's also to you, Chris. Amanda mentioned something in regards to, and I guess we can start speculating here in regards to a relationships. You know, we see that he's very by himself, but he has his, uh, his golden friend that he confide, confides in every now and then uh, yeah. <laughs> that he talks to. But then he also has a conversation about, um, you know, his mom. You know, he mentions his mom a couple of times this episode. And when I was watching this first episode, I'm like, I wonder, is this, you know, Baron Zemo all over again? Like, did something happen to his mom? And like, this is just his way of coping with whatever and, and leaving voicemails. Uh, so your thoughts, number one, on him being kind of a loner and this mother's speculation. Is it is someone real? Is it is it fake? Your thoughts on that, Chris? Yeah, watching the episode, I had the feeling that she was not around. Yeah. Same. And that it was like a little, a little sad little moment there. And then I thought that the gold guy was really his friend and would talk back <laughs> and be like, bro, I'm trying to work right now. Like, right. I'll talk to you later because they were maybe actually friends. But no, they they are not friends. He's alone. So I was like, yeah, the whole time watching, I got this vibe that Stephen, he reminded me of Stephen Merchant. I'm sure you guys know the, the oh, actor. tall, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 director, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he he used weirdo. to be on the office and things like that. So he yeah. had that kind of that quirky British energy, yeah, of yeah, just yeah. being like, just like never, like you just never know what the right thing to say. And I agree with Amanda. Like the comedy didn't feel like it was like forced, like the Falcon. It just felt like, um, like the dude is just a funny dude. And, wait, what happened? I think I got hacked. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> it, was just, it just seemed like he was a funny dude and this is like things that would actually happen in his life 
No, I yeah. agree. And you, and again, again, he's growing on me, but I do feel the vulnerable side of him, and I feel bad for him that he doesn't have friends to talk to. And again, if we're speculating that his mom is gone or made up, that is something uh, that makes me care for the character. I will say that. But before we move on, quick shout out to Rims with the twenty dollars super chat. Happy to uh, have the to celebrate the Ace Crew. Uh, we are reactivated. Miss these sessions with you all. Happy to take another Disney Plus journey with everyone again. Love you all, <laughs> Will Rims. We love you. We appreciate you. We're Glad to be back and talking about this character, Steven, you know, what we got with Mark and, and Moon Knight and all these new characters. I appreciate you, Rem. So, uh, and again, guys, like, share, comment, subscribe to all of these, uh, Amanda and Chris, their links are in the bio. So going from meeting our villain, meeting our hero, we talked about the routines, but we wake up with Steven who wakes up in this mysterious field, which by the way, the, the jaw being broke, I, I have a thing about like when people pop stuff back in or pop it out, it yeah. just always gets me. But uh, Amanda, he wakes up in this random mysterious field. He has this, uh, this relic in his pocket and we start to get, okay, he can literally be out for, as we find out later in this episode, days at a time. Uh, so your thoughts on, again, just seeing him and we'll talk about the action here in a second, but just the idea of this person who can just, blank out black out and be in a completely it would have seemed like another state country but we're not a country but this seems mm -hmm. like a completely far away from his homeland uh as possible your thoughts on just this how quick he can just go into blackout mode shook i think that's the best word to describe it because what i love the most about this show and they did it so well within the first like 10 minutes of this thing is that the same way Steven's trying to figure out what the hell's happening, the audience is trying to figure out what the hell's happening. And that's why every step of the way, everything that he's going through, we're also going through it with him. And I think that's why it's so engaging and entertaining. Um, yeah, it's just really interesting. I, I I love that part. I love that he's like, he starts to hear things too yeah. uh, when he goes to that plane. Um, yeah, I was just more like, what is going on? Things are going to start happening. I was just so excited. But your eyes do not leave that screen. And I think that's what's so awesome about this show. Yeah, I agree with you. And Chris Tossin, to your thoughts on this scene. And also just uh, we get a, a little bit of taste of a character we'll talk about here in a little bit with uh, Kondru, uh, Kondru. But your thoughts on, again, this, this idea of you can literally be sleeping in your bed, peaceful, living your life and wake up and you're getting bullets shot at you and ran and chased after. It just, again, just puts you in the mindset of this character. Yeah, I was confused because, of course, the natural thing is like, oh, is this the guy dreaming or whatever? Or this is this guy has visions. But yeah, no, it's crazy. I mean, it gets crazier when you get down to the end with like the whole like steak dinner and all that. And you're just like, yeah, it was like Interstellar. Remember that? And it was like, damn. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, the, the one thing that I would say is that I didn't love so far was the CGI from the from the visions that he was seeing when the figures. I was like, I was like, the, the, the episode as a whole looks like it could be in the movie theater. So I think it's the most. And maybe I said this about I said this in the beginning of Hawkeye. Hawkeye started out as like really like cinematic and like looked professional. This one looks like the most polished movie ready show. But I will say my little one little knock was the CGI on the guys. And the first time you see it, I think it's in that scene there. But I was like, yeah, this is crazy. And then you get the like the real cool scene when he gets that first interaction with Ethan. What is his name in the movie in the show? Uh Arthur Hero. Yeah. yeah so he gets that into that's, that's that scene with Arthur. And then you're like, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Well, hey, just to toss it right back to you, Chris. Just t touching on that scene again. You just mentioned that we get a yeah. little bit of Arthur, and we hear a little bit of who he believes in. Right? He he believes in this God, the who judges sinners and the the, the eat the eats hearts, and we see that they worship him and the scales and all that supernatural this is what i've been wanting from the mcu for a long time we were definitely dealing this isn't no grounded reality stuff we got some supernatural stuff going on with ethan hawk's character yeah. your thoughts on this moment here and this worshiping this uh ahmed god first of all i'm like lady if he says you're good what's gonna happen because <laughs> if he says you're not you're dead so like what unless they say like if you're good you become like a god a goddess and you'd be rich but like nah i'll just i'll just figure it out on my own bro like that's crazy it reminded me of the Netflix show Hellbound. I think that was from uh, Korea as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically just like, you know, you're being judged for your the, for the crimes that mm -hmm. maybe you haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, man, this is wild. So like, I love that angle of like, you know, just like this judgment. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And then the whole scene of the playing keep away, like that's like crazy acting, acting chops to make that really look that believable that he, this mm -hmm. guy doesn't have control of his hands, which again, is like the mask. I keep going back to it. Like that's it's like physical acting is, is like a real, like that's an art. 
Yeah. So like for me to believe that, I was like, this is this is elite. No, I agree, man. And it, and it's something you you mentioned. And I, and Amanda, did you get the same vibes? And Chris, you, I don't know if you all immediately when they kind of brought up the whole judging and sin, sins and all that. I was like, that very uh, Winter Soldierish in regards to the Hydra program and predetermined yeah. that people are going to mm -hmm. make mistakes. And and so I wonder if this is again knowing that we are talking about Egyptian gods, which dates back way before Hydra. I wonder if Hydra piggyback off of that mythology and that ideology mm -hmm. in regards to prejudging people and, and, you know, seeing if they're worthy of living or not. Uh, but very interesting stuff there. But again, tossing it to you, Amanda, the scales mm -hmm. on the arm, he judges these people. He has his own belief system. And Mark is, uh, or I should say at this point, Steven is uh, being introduced to this, uh, this character here. I love that scene. It turns everything on its head. Um, I absolutely, again, Ethan Hawke in that scene, he's very reserved and calm and collected while he's delivering this news to them. And I think that that just makes his character so intriguing. Um, but again, what Chris said, the physicality, the physical acting from Oscar Isaac, that is extremely hard to do. Yeah. Because yeah. you're acting as Steven, but you have the mindset of yeah. Mark. And I thought that that was just wild to me. And that was the moment I knew I'm like, he is going to blow every single actor out of the water in the MCU. And I'm being dead serious. Like this is God to your acting and what he's giving us. And I'm just so happy that he's here I with praise. us. I know I love him to death. And you know what? It's the fact that he's been flying under the radar majority of his career and mm -hmm. now that he's leading his own show like i literally need to put respect on his name and just like he needs the recognition because it's just so good but yeah i love that scene i think that was the turning point as i said and it just gets better from here you touched on something that definitely I agree with, Amanda, regarding just Os this touching on Oscar Isaac and his performance in this episode and in this moment. It reminds me of uh, Jonathan Majors, you know, when he found out he was going to be Kang and knowing he's going to play mm -hmm. these variant different versions of Kang, as in, if I was an actor, uh, which I'm not, uh, that sounds like such a cool thing to be able to tackle is I can do something yeah. new every single time. He gets to be Steven. He gets to be, you know, Mark Spector. We're going to see a little bit of Moon Knight and other characters and, and stuff like that. To me, that just sounds so exciting as an actor. Like you said, Amanda, sometimes, you know, we have the pretentious actors. Like, oh, I don't want to do a Marvel, DC, all that stuff. But when you, when you take away the capes and all that stuff, the idea of you getting to play someone that suffers with multiple split personalities and yeah. you can be this person one day and be another person and live in a completely different life another day. It's just so fascinating to me. So like you all said, Oscar is doing his thing in this scene, which let's talk about it. This is where my criticism kind of lies in uh, the action. Now we, we see them, the mm -hmm. goons take them and they have yeah, the stirrup uh, yeah, in his hand yeah. and we yeah. see, we flash, we get the moment where he blinks out and he wakes up and there's blood and all that. And I know Marvel fans, they see an ounce of blood and they're like, oh, this is what I've been waiting for. A little bit of blood. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> I get it. I know you mentioned it, Chris, episode one. I totally agree with you there. I'm the type of person, I want to see that action, bro. I want to see him, how he took out those people with ease or if it was a little bit of pushback. But I just wanted to get more of that. And we'll get into the car sequence here in a bit. But Tossing to you first, Chris, your thoughts on, again, him blanking out, taking out these men with ease. And there was a little, like I said, there was some blood on there, but was it just me or did you want to see some of that action as well, man? No, I did. You know, of course, I think your your what your point is saying that, like, you know, you, you're used to the action and, and you, like, you're like, OK, you're literally just skipping every important part that I want to see. But in my head, I agreed. With, I would agree with you if that's your point. But I thought, okay, this is episode one. They're just they're just teasing me. They're just they're just giving me. They're just dragging it out so like we don't get everything right away. So and of course I haven't seen the other episodes. So maybe they're just maybe it never gets like that. But in my head I thought, okay, it would be cool to see that. But I thought, okay, this is unique to say like, oh, you're giving the fans like just a little taste. But it's mm -hmm. like what what this guy could do. But we're like, nah, we don't. This episode one, we just we just we just chill it right now. Same thing with the suit. You got me, you got my whole attention for the whole episode. I don't see the suit to the end and I'm still happy. I'm still, so it's like, all right, you want to see the suit? All right, give him a little suit. So I, that was my, that was my thing. It was like, yes, I'd love to see this, yeah, but yeah. I think I know why you're doing this. I hear you. I hear you. And I agree with you. I'm just, I just want to see it, Chris. I just want to <laughs> see the action. I'm an action fiend and I yeah, love yeah, 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 when yeah. we get to see those moments and, and totally agree with you, man. Again, the Jaws effect, the gods, I know a lot of people didn't like Godzilla 2014 that you only saw Godzilla for like the last half of the film and it builds up to that when you see the reveal. But I'm just like, at this point, I want to see my man lay down them hands. And I mean, again, this isn't, you know, daredevil levels, but I mean, there was, this looks like a pretty violent exchange. I mean, there's literally blood mm -hmm. on his hands, blood on the floor. Yeah. I would have had loved to have seen as blood on his face, but they don't show us Amanda. But like Chris said, do you agree with Chris? It's just like, 
hey, we're going to just take you guys on the ride, just give you a little taste and, and all that. How did you feel about that sequence of, uh, you know, Stephen waking up to Mark Spector putting them's hand on the goons? At first, I was like, oh, man, like you're, you're not going to show it. But then I feel like it's more of a character choice. And I think the transitions and the editing were really, really strong in this first episode to kind of show the duality and that there's someone else there. Um, so I think it's for me, it's like I didn't mind it because I feel like it is more of a character choice than like an action choice. Uh, just to show that there is someone else going in and out of his mind and his body. And like, I think it is more of a tease. But if we get if we get action scenes with just Mark or with just um, with Steven, that's fine. The bloodier, the better at this point. Oh, yeah. We should go all out. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't mind it at all. It's a little tease, but I, I do think that it was beneficial for the character and understanding, yeah. um, I guess, the psychology of going in and out in that way. I hear you. I hear you guys. I just, I just, I just want some action. I just, you know, three uh, months like, being away from you, Marvel. I feel you. I feel you. I, I want, I want to see it. But we, you know, we get this car sequence, which again, going back to Chris talking about earlier, as far as cinematic feel to it, you know, this isn't your average TV show, right? This is Marvel, so they mm -hmm. give us, you know, some really cool sequences. We see him, you know, cutting in and out again from Steven and Mark coming in, taking him out. He has a gun. He doesn't know where it comes from and all that different stuff. Again, playing into the whole idea of the, you know someone is else is in control someone else hand is on the wheel again chris your thoughts on this on this sequence here being in the car was it something that you were uh entertained by my friend yeah i'm trying to think if it's um, if it like ranks as uh, you know other cars chases especially car chases in the mcu i don't know that i was like so blown away like like yeah it's another car it's another car chase so i'm like is this what the car chase of all car chases no i don't think right. so this isn't winter um, soldier bucky you know car chase exactly by any exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> especially that then cut out the, the main points but i think that's the part it's like okay this guy must be so talented that he can do all this keep the car yeah. off the damn cliff yeah and you know drive it backwards so like that's what they're trying to show i wasn't so blown away by the moment but i was like okay i get what they're showing that this dude is like actually like a real dude like a real deal See, he must be elite, right? Like you said, Chris, yeah. to be able to do that and still like cutting in and out of someone that that does mm -hmm. speak highly to Mark Spector. Mm -hmm. Which you're bringing cupcakes. I was like, man, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're fighting cupcakes. cupcakes. Wasting all those good cupcakes, cupcakes man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, don't even get that's one of my pet peeves in, in movies and shows is a waste of food, waste of food. Uh, especially when you do, like, <laughs> breakfast scenes. And it's like, all right, mom, yeah. thanks yeah. for laying yeah, out exactly. this whole entree. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Amanda, your thoughts on this sequence again, like Chris said, seeing uh, you know, Steven in, in the battle and the duality with uh, Mark Spector and cutting in and out, your thoughts on the uh, the car chase. I mean, the second Wham came on with that song <laughs> choice, I was like, yeah, it's Wham, Deadpool would be happy. Um, but it was just, it was funny. I mean, the cupcake truck, like, I, that was like mcu -y, like, like, for, like I, I don't know, like the humor was like that. But again, Steven yeah. and Mark flowing in and out, that transition, um, them speaking to each other, I think. Uh, and hearing those voices, that's what the action scene was for, more so than the action scene to be like developed and strong. It was basic, uh, just to show that. I like the windshield wipers going back and forth on the guy at the gun. <laughs> I thought that was cute, but um, you just love Steven even more. He's like, what the hell's happening? I don't know how to drive. These guys are coming after me. And it's just, yeah. it, it yeah. just makes you love the character. Yeah, that might have been my least favorite line of the whole thing. I don't have a license. <laughs> That like because you know I, I do love the jokes but yeah uh, yeah don't need that I don't need yeah that. No, I agree and and going back to what Amanda said a little bit earlier it does make you again being in Steven's shoes even though he's gonna have to grow on me it does put you you're you're the audience at that point because again like Amanda said you're he doesn't know what's going on we don't know what's going on so it just adds another element of just kind of surprise and going through this journey with the character which speaking of the journey you feel bad for him you know he, he he's he got uh you know an, an out of his league per se i mean it's oscar isaac but it's steven really but you know steven grant got this young lady to go on this uh steak dinner and he he put it all on the line he was a vegan but now he's eating meat yeah. because he wanted to go on his date but yeah. unfortunately he's two days late for the date he sees that the the goldfish uh thin has grown in which starts to bring in the other element and he hears steven uh hears mark specter's name for the first time after he calls this mysterious woman on the phone by the name of lila and, and tossing it to you here chris we get our first kind of tinge of a little bit of horror a little bit of jump scares on the mcu when we officially meet conju 
yeah, the moon god. So your thoughts on this whole reveal of hearing Mark Spector's name, who is this mysterious woman, and then seeing live and fresh uh, the moon god. Yeah. So yeah, rewind. I, you know, you know me. I love my little romance, and I was very upset that he didn't get to go on this date because I was like, man. damn, like he Missed had it. like because that, that's his coworker. That's what we're supposed to expect it, that they work together. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, man, you messed this up. I hope maybe later. You know, y'all already know, but I was like, man, maybe you can get it back. But um, I so after that, what happens after that? So oh, yeah, so then you then he finds the phone, and I was like, damn, that's a razor. That's crazy. Like, where is he? <laughs> super low key, super low key. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even though they did re-release the razor, so maybe I'm supposed to believe it's a new razor, and it's it's not in the U.S. So the, in the U.S. we wouldn't have that, but maybe over there they have it. So cool. Um, yeah, I don't know that I felt any of the jump scariness, and I'm really like a soft ass. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't normally be scared. So I wasn't so scared at this moment. Plus, like I had to watch it in the morning, so it's less creepy. It's like that. Yeah, they lied. Yeah. Yeah. I should. I wish I, I should be watching the show at night, but I didn't feel so scary. No. But I was just like, I, I was very interested. I'm like, damn, like, who the hell is Layla? Why is she calling him so much? Yeah. At, at first, I thought it was the girl from work, but I'm like, if he misses dinner, <laughs> you're, not, you're not calling fifty times. You right. might call it three times. So I was like, damn, like, and then he calls it back, and then like. Like this, then he talk about the accent. I'm like, okay, like this is really like he's really living two different lives. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what I, what I took from it. And I again, I didn't love the graphics of the CGI, but I was still just more even more invested. Like where like where is it taking me? Like yeah. And I wasn't like I was just like I was like excited to see like what happens next. This was like very much like a you're not texting. You're just like you're you're in it. Like you're focused. Right. Something you brought up, Chris, in regards to that razor phone. I'm just kind of curious, Amanda, if you have uh, any thoughts on it. Did, did it matter to you all, uh, timeline? Like, did it matter that we, I don't know? I assume this is post Thanos. I assume this is, you know, mm. current timeline. But did that matter to you all at all that we don't really know the placement of where is this after Eternals, after Spider Man? Is it before Hawkeye? I think the that MCU, that you it's all? just been like, it's been so, so loopy that it's like, yeah. there's, there's, maybe Marvel just wants to keep it vague so that yeah. down the line they yeah. can move things around and they can say, oh, no, that wasn't at that time. There, yeah. It must be intentional. Like, I just stopped trying to keep yeah. track because I just don't, like, I never really know, like, I, when. For your post snap, yeah. I think. Or if I feel like it's a burner phone, because like they have burner phones. So a burner yeah. phone wouldn't be an iPhone necessarily. Right. But I Which mean, like, like I said, sure, like, yeah. Yeah. like yeah, there is so a new I, razor. So like it's yeah. not. It oh, could I be didn't new. know that. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. I retract my statement. Yeah, yeah there's, there's definitely a new <laughs> razor. So like I was thinking, like, okay, like he, like in the US, like we wouldn't use that. Everyone has an iPhone okay. or else just to yourself. Yeah. yeah. But, but, oh, but oh, in Europe, they have, they, they use the other phones like, like the like really? iPhone just had the yeah. market share over there, so I was like, okay, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't caught up on that. Like I I still have no idea when this is happening. And, and I guess so. It's, so does it? It doesn't bother you that we are recluseless on the timeline as far as like where this sits in between? Is this a world? Well, I mean, that like, is because I think they made it. They made it clear that this there's no other real MCU characters coming in this. So that's like, gonna be my next point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, maybe it don't matter when it is because we're not. It's not like. He's gonna run into the Black Panther. He's like gonna right. run into you know uh, Blade or like we just don't know where this sits, which then becomes a, a question in itself. It's like, yeah, okay, great show, but what's the point? How does it fit into the larger picture? Because that's all we want to know is like this dude is cool, we like him. Where do we go with him to bring him that's into the fold? Perfect segue and, and toss into you, Amanda, again as far as timing, timeline, where it takes place. Did it? Did it? And again, episode one. Did it bother you at all that you that? Cause I'm a perfectionist. I always love, especially with Marvel. I always like my okay, okay. We know that Homecoming or uh, Far From Home and and Hawkeye were similar times. WandaVision and Loki, you know that. So did it bother you at all in regards to like feeling displaced or not having any larger MCU connections in this first episode at all? Um, you know what? I think I was just so invested with the character that I didn't even realize or even think about it because mm -hmm. he's just so good. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I do want to tie in by the end of this. I think that if there is no tie in that a lot of people are going to be upset because then the whole show, like Chris said, it's like, well, what is the point of Moon Knight if he's not going to tie in with the rest of these characters? But I think it's actually impossible if we don't get like a little blade like note or like even daredevil if they end up in new york or something like that i think that that's where they're gonna go with it mm -hmm. um but yeah I, I, by the end of this if they don't have it then i'd be upset but right now i'm just like enjoying the ride, ride. <laughs> i'm right there with it. and again 
episode one, I you know, I'm just not expecting any major cameos, yeah. and I hope to God that no actor comes out and say, "Hey, episode five, right? you, you guys get ready." It's gonna, you know, I hope they don't do that yeah. all over again. Yeah. We've learned the only and correct me if wrong, the only one we can agree with was a good cameo was Kang. Everyone else to me was just, yeah. who cares? You know, yeah, Chris, well, you have been, it, no. I was about to say it could have been Quicksilver. Kingpin. Oh, quick! Oh, that could have. Oh, been definitely not Kingpin. That I would was, say it could have been was, Kingpin, but we all know how that yes. went. With, uh, I yes, I was gonna, no, I said it. I was gonna say it could have been Quicksilver. That would have been the yeah. craziest Ooh. one. Kang is of course Sorry. crazy, but like, yeah. if that was really Quicksilver from from the X Men, then it would have been like been that's changer. the biggest. That's bigger yeah. than Kang because like Kang's new, so like yeah. we know he's coming. Yeah, like yeah. we knew that. So, yeah. but yeah, we'll 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 see. I hope again. I hope they don't throw that uh hyperbole out there but again it'll be interesting to see again what this connects to and if it's tied to the greater mcu but again going back into it here and also quick shout out to yolanda with the 1999 super chat i uh, appreciate you great conversation as always between the ace crew glad you all are back well we are no, glad to be back yolanda, yolanda. and we appreciate the love and the support there but getting back into it here starting with you chris we see this again the second conversation now and arthur he's coming at him again this kind of shows uh another side of him he, he can yeah. be very calm cool collective he tells him a little bit more about why he worships uh and then you see the kind of difference between those two there in that conversation and he offers to give him the scales and he doesn't reveal all he says is there's chaos in you and he lets him go about his business which we get this big moment with this uh creature here that we'll talk about but again going back to you chris in regards to arthur and his ideology and what he believes in. Is there a little bit of uh, that villain yeah. where you kind of agree yeah. with some of what he's saying, possibly? Yeah, on the surface, you you agree with a little bit, but you don't know if if he's being truthful because then it, it it brings you to think of you know Thanos thinks you know there's not enough resources, no problem, cool. Then I thought of Eternals where the guy's like you know we can with the Joker now um, you can prevent. These things. Why don't we? Why don't we step in and prevent these things? So he, he's 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 dropping the buzzwords: Holocaust. Uh, well, he yeah. said Hitler, uh, Armenian genocide, mm -hmm. things like this. So it's like, yeah. yeah, you're saying these things, but why don't I believe any of you, what you're saying? Because right. then is it a slippery slope where you're just like, okay, well, let me control this, let me con control that. Um, but I was interested to see like that scene. I don't know if I under like I don't know if I fully followed why they let him go, or how like what was happening there, but. I, I understood what they were trying to do with, with making us conflicted with, oh, well, if he wants to stop the Holocaust, this guy must be good. But there's, there's <laughs> got to be more to it, what he, what his real plan is. Um, maybe he wants to stop the, anything that he doesn't control. Well, I think, and it's such a great point you bring up there, Chris, and so I'll to you, Amanda, and, and let me know yeah. if you agree with this, but I think in that conversation, it's just like, at what cost, right? What what do you have yeah. to do to be able to prevent those right. things? There has to be some type of sacrifice or some type of uh, for the greater good type of discussion. So I, I'm pretty confident in, in Arthur's, uh, you know, his his thought process isn't going to be sunshine, rainbows, let's all have a happy day. Yeah. So your thoughts, Amanda, again, on this chaos and this chaos is inside of him. And, and I'm not going to lie, Chris, I did find it weird that they let him just run away. It's like, you got him mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> Why'd mm -hmm. you just take him? But yeah. we had to get the cool jackal creature that we'll talk about here in a second to chase him down. But your thoughts again, Amanda, on Arthur and again, his ideology and what he believes in. And this, it sounds good, but he ain't a good guy. No. I feel like he's like five steps ahead and he knows everything about everybody. And then he just tells people what they want to hear. So he's very like manipulative in that way. It kind of reminded me of like Baron Zemo, who's doing the right thing in his own mind. Yeah. Kind of. And then like, it's still destructive or can cause harm, but there's always going to yeah. be a catch to it. So uh, those are the most interesting villains as we know. So um, I, I love that about him. Uh, yeah. I don't know why he kind of disappeared, but then the episode would kind of, been over right then and there after that right. so true. um true. yeah i just i love that interaction they had yeah. great chemistry this first episode like right off the bat like i just love their dynamic and um yeah ethan hawk man what a legend he's so he's great. great he's great yeah. and, and something you said there too man in regards to a good villain the best villains are the ones that believe in what they're doing is the right thing. So when you can, when they can believe it, it makes the audience kind of conflicted. And, and when you have someone that's just so ingrained and, and believes in what they do, it just makes it even more juicier uh, with the character. And Ethan Hawke so far has definitely played into it. But visual effects. Uh, Chris, I know you mentioned it earlier. This to me where I was like, yeah, yeah. It looks okay. I think it could be a little bit cleaner, but going mm -hmm. into this jackal creature who is chasing Steven throughout the, uh, the museum, 
He makes his way to the bathroom. I love that every time that we've seen so far, Stephen communicating with Mark, it's always a mirror there that split. Uh, you know, there's someone there and he says, Let me save us. We get the, and I'm not going to lie, guys, it was a little anticlimactic. It was due to the fact that I've seen the trailer a billion times. And I was just hoping sure. that the ending was maybe a different angle. There was more to it, but we, we've seen it. But again, I, I'm not yeah. going to take that because maybe some people didn't see the trailer and they were blown away by it. But I was just a little like, oh, I, I've seen that a million times. But we do get the end with him in the full suit. Chris, your thoughts on how we wrapped up the episode with, again, the chasing of the, the jackal to the bathroom and finally seeing after the entire episode, we finally get to see Moon Knight in his full glory. Yeah, I liked all the mirror scenes just like you. And then, like I said, the same thing with the physical acting with the stupid uh, bumblebee thing or whatever it is, the beetle. Um, like those are those are that's a testament to him as, as an actor. So I, I love the way he, he like he's acting as two different, maybe three. Uh, and, and we're believing that it's three different characters. The suit. Yes, we did watch the trailer. I did see the trailer a lot. I don't know what they could have done to make it more. more epic, yeah. Because it's like we have seen it. But it did look cool. It got that look like uh, the Shredder from Turtles 2, <laughs> minus the color. But that's the yeah. same, it's the same cape, same shape of, yep. of, the, of the of the headpiece too. So yep. I was like, I was like, all right, this is valid. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, we have seen it a million times, but I don't know how to get around it because you can't not show it in the trailer because this is mm-hmm. a new character. You got to give some little, give him something. So yeah. you're right, but I don't have a solution for that. I don't know, maybe show, because again, as the scene plays out, we see the transformation of him, does the suit consuming him, and then we cut from it, and we just hear the, you know, the, the punch and all that stuff, and again, I, let me see it, camera, I know what you doing, <laughs> I just want to be in that room, uh, but again, we see it, and then again, we get him in his full glory, and it's the last shot, which I don't know if, if people, let us know in the chat, guys, and of course, Amanda, your thoughts. Were you disappointed that that's the only time we saw Moon Knight? Again, we know we have five other episodes, but uh, were you a yeah. little bit disappointed that the suit wasn't more heavily uh, involved in this first episode? Or did you think it was a perfect amount? Um, I thought it was perfect. I absolutely love that bathroom scene. I love that they're talking to each other. We get to see Mark Spector going back and forth in his mind and like that power struggle. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was genius. Just the way they utilize the space and showing that there's more than one person there with him. I think that that's my favorite aspect of the show so far. Um, For me, this is such a lovely change of pace because we had to work for that final uniform that final suit in every other mcu show so to get this in the first episode episode, like i i was content i was so happy with it but again i think like the camera works really cool i know you want to see the action i I know (laughs) i know but like it's just really (laughs) effective and unique and thank god we got that suit because it still looks gorgeous no matter how many times you see it yeah, I mean, again, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. This is it looked. It's, it's a. Vi- I think it's all VFX. I think it's all a CGI. Mm-hmm. A su- I think every now and then we might see us because from what I've seen from behind the scenes, we might see him and in, in without the visual. I don't know. I, I'm I'm more of a practicality type of person. I love yeah. a practical suit. I know Spider Man barely has any practicality to him, but uh, yeah. it looks clean for what it is. It looks clean. I would imagine as a man, just a little too. You know, come if he is in the greater MCU in a film or whatnot, we might see evolutions of the suit. That we might see different variations of the suit. But so far, so good in regards to how it looks and all that. But Chris, I guess d- disappoints you too. Did you have any gripes about just seeing it the last shot, or are you in the same boat with a man as far as like giving it to us at the end, just a tease, obviously to come back for episode two? No, no, I was very happy with it um, because of how they shaped the rest of the episode. They gave us a lot. Um, and they gave us a lot to be interested in. So, and then for me again, like we don't know Moon Knight. So mm-hmm. I remember when the so it's like I'm what I'm, I don't even know what I'm waiting for. So like that's a, it's another yeah. benefit to them. It's kind of like the first Hulk that that the one that sucks. Um, it took so long for the Hulk to come out, and people were like, "What the hell?" But that's the Hulk. Like you know, like you're waiting for the Hulk. Yeah. But like this is Moon Knight, so we're like, mm, I'm just here to like this. I'm, everything is new, so you're just like, right. you, you, you have more patience for it. I think with a new character. That's true. And again, it's always, you know, good writing when you can, you know, you don't have to lead with, again, I'm, I'm very action heavy. I know that the dialogues, the acting is going to be there because of the talent behind it. But again, I'm just, you know, action people like myself, we want to see the action, but it's always, it's a slow burn. It makes the, hopefully, you know, yeah. a payoff. And when we do see those more, maybe a tense scenes uh, to potentially to come. So yeah, overall, like I said, I wasn't, there was nothing that blew me away from this episode. It didn't like 
you know, reinvent the wheel by any source, but there's a lot to explore. There's a lot to get excited for uh, based on this first episode. Like I said, I think for me, I would put, you know, other, a low key episode one to me kind of hit a little bit more, maybe a little bit of the WandaVision intrigue, the mystery element. But I would say this is, you know, maybe my third or fourth favorite, like, premiere episode uh, from really everything else Wanda that we got. one over moon Knight one <sighs> I, 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 dude i'm telling you one only one one to one you can't Man. nothing Man. happens in i don't Wanda. know chris that when we were at that dinner table and when they kind of snapped out of the the whole thing uh, that, I was, know, that was fire. Like, you don't want to you don't want them that's fire but yeah yeah it, I mean, okay, I, okay. i'll say loki definitely no loki to me was the best premiere episode i'll give you i'll give you um, i definitely give you loki the whole back and forth yeah. conversations and all that but I don't know, Amanda. Take take the wheel for a second in regards to your. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking. Amanda, give us the number, give us the top three, three episode three. ones. The top oh my three god! Ones. Moon Knight surpassed everything for me. Number I absolutely one, love one, this one, first three. episode. I, I honestly, I feel like this is going to be my favorite MCU show by the end of this. I'm not going to lie to you. Like that, those are the vibes right now. Um, you guys know how I feel about WandaVision. I feel like that first episode was solid, but the first three episodes of WandaVision, like that's where uh, all, the bulk like, of it. Wants, yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. So yeah. I, yeah, if we're going from like first episode, I do think Moon Knight's stronger. For me, I love the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode one. So yeah, I thought, that was a good I one. Re- yeah. I, I thought remember. it was strong. I know you don't. It's okay. Real quick, though. Real quick, though. Real quick, though. Real, 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 like, remind me real quick. With, like, tell me what happened in that. Just give me something quick. He does the whole. Sport. Oh, is it the is it the football yeah. thing? Is that how we find? Is that is that part of it? When yeah, he... he goes, yeah, he like gives them the shield, and then he has that whole speech with Steve Rogers, and then like they find out that they get, at the end of the episode that the the shield was given to Walker, and then it's like, oh my he god, can't get a loan on the house. The whole thing. Or the, yeah, oh, it's god, yeah. God. and then Bucky's <laughs> in therapy. You know that mm-hmm. whole situation. Anyways, that was my second. I got, I got, I got Moon Knight. Yeah, what up? This is okay. <laughs> and then I put Loki. So it'd probably Moon Knight, Falcon, and then Loki for me. Gotcha. We got yeah, Moon Knight, Loki, WandaVision. Uh, WandaVision holds a special spot. Uh, Daredevil season one so has entered the ranking. Listen, Daredevil to me is is still my personal opinion the best produced Marvel show to date. Um, hopefully, you know maybe Moon Knight gets in that conversation. But right now, I think Daredevil and Chris. By the way, I totally forgot this. Last time we spoke, you were like catching up to the Daredevils of the world. Yeah. Where is the the Chris meter on the? And by the way, I say Netflix. They're no longer on Netflix. They're on Disney Plus now. Yeah. But where where have you landed on that show? Did you finish Daredevil at all? I didn't finish it for at all, no. But I'm, it's like that slow burn. It's like oh, like if you get like five seconds, you, you throw it that on. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, no, I, it's it's a good. I, I see I see the hype, so it's it's good. <laughs> it's definitely good. Gotcha, gotcha, man. Well, listen, overall, and I want to get your thoughts overall wrapping up Amanda and Chris, but for me, I, again, nothing completely wowed me, but what gets me intrigued, I'm very interested to see this duality between Steven and Mark. Can they coexist? Can they not get on the same page? Very similar to the, hopefully this is much better than the Hulk and uh, Bruce Banner, because you all know how I feel about that character. Yeah, yeah dead to me uh so I, i'm hoping we get more uh they touched on the mental health aspect i hope the show doesn't just use that as a you know just a, a, a we're tackling mental health and i hope they actually dive into that in this show uh but i'm really in, intrigued to see not only mark and steven coexist but kanju how does he fit into this mix how does he go into this trio what's his you know his ideology what is you know what is what does he believe at what cost does his missions come into account? So I'm really intrigued to see all that from the rest of this. And we're talking gods. So are we, you know, we got celestials in the MCU. We've already had, you know, with Thor and Odin. So Egyptian gods, like, where are we going with that? What's the, the, the power uh, scaling on that? So that gets me really intrigued. So tossing it to you, Amanda, your hopes and, and overall thoughts and uh, what we, what you expect and hope to see in the series. Uh, more action just for you, oh, Elliot. You. More, <laughs> more action. Totally um, agree. <laughs> um, I just, I really don't want them to mistreat the mental health aspect, as yeah. you said. Um, he's such a fascinating character, such a complex character. Uh, I just want them to do him justice. But I'm just so, so excited to get to know this character even more, to get to know Mark and Conchu. I think Conchu is going to be a, a fantastic addition to the MCU. He kind of like, well, it's the next up anyways. I'm not going to give it away, but he's just, he's a lot of fun. I've been reading the comics and doing my own research and I'm just really excited for Conchu. I feel like this one alone, this 
first episode and like the series, it feels like it's more polished. And the one thing I do have to add is that I absolutely love the pacing in this first episode. I think that's going to be the strength of this entire season. Uh, and sorry, that's the series, point. just because yeah. the pacing is really strong. I did feel it lull, but like it was just really into it really quick. Um, yeah. and I can't believe how much they put in one episode. Well, like, I, I was mean, just going to, you brought up such a great point, man. I think this is based on episode one, 50 something minute. We're not, you know, we're not in WandaVision, yeah. 23 minute, 24 minute. We're yeah. getting into like a, a hour long type episode, which gets me excited. Yeah. So I love it. <laughs> Chris, man, same with you after this overall thoughts, what are things you would hope to explore, hope to meet? Do you need any MCU connections to, to satisfy you to make this, you know, part of the team? I need it, yes, but I think I'm not getting it. And I think they said that already. So I already level set my expectations. Mm -hmm. Do I need it for the show to be good? No, but I think it would make the show gooder. Um, I think that... Uh, I Connecting think that, everything together. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 for sure. Yeah, I'm impressed with this. I think I read or heard that the writer for the first episode is different from the next couple and then comes back for the last one or two. Mm. So that is something to look for or look at um, as far as how like how the feel of the episodes go. Mm. But yeah, I'm definitely excited. I love to learn about new characters that I didn't know growing up or, or in the comics, um, especially in a way that's that that's that's cared for. And that I just think like they, they're, they're taking it seriously. Yeah. And um, I hope people watch it. Um, it it's, it's good. And I, and I like the little break. You know, we had Hawkeye. That was that's a few months so it's like yeah three months first yeah. we're getting like it felt like it was like every week because yeah, back weeks, to back yeah every, yeah. yeah but I, I like the break so it's like all right we're back now then it's going to get us in, in that's in that, in that same mood yeah um, to strange mm -hmm. and then you, you go on from there of course we don't address morbius but you know it, strange is just going to get us excited for that so it's a perfect nice little spot in the calendar for the show no, mm -hmm. I agree, man. I'm glad to be back. I'm excited to learn more about this character mm -hmm. and, and tackle, uh, you know, what Moon Knight looks like in the MCU and um, learn all what comes with that. So, look, we're back. Excited to be back. I'm excited to dive deep into this character. Episode two is coming next week. Uh, really excited to see what they give us there and uh, more excited to be back with Amanda and Chris breaking it down with you all. So, any closing thoughts, Amanda? What is the next awesome project you have lined up for the folks? What's the next review you got lined up for the folks? Where can they find you? Yeah, well, this is always a blast. The chat has been awesome tonight. I miss you all. So I'm, I'm happy that we're going to be together for the next five weeks. Um, you guys can always follow me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I, for one, am very excited for Morbius because I like good, bad movies. And the way these reviews have been <laughs> coming out, it is not that great, but I'm excited. So uh, it's just something different. I like the Sony verse. I like what they're doing. Uh, so that's going to probably be my next review on my website, candidxcinema.com and uh, my YouTube channel, Candid Cinema. My Moon Knight episode one review is up right now. And uh, I can't wait to watch more of these guys. I'm excited. <laughs> Nice. You, you, you said, yeah, you know, bad, good movies. There was yeah. some, there's some truth in what you just said. Now I'll, uh, I'll just leave it at that <laughs> to, uh, where it falls there. But Chris, again, Amanda, always love having you on. Can't wait to talk episode two with you uh, next week. Again, mm -hmm. guys, check her out. Links in the bio. Chris, main man, taste take what we got coming on the channel, man. Where can the people find you? Yeah, for sure. Taste take, like, comment, subscribe. If you guys are into the movie and TV content, but yeah, the next the next review we got the end of season one of Bel Air. That's that's the review that I'm dropping tomorrow morning. So first season is in the books for Bel Air. They they were signed on for two seasons, so you know for sure there's going to be some more of that. Um, I mentioned in the beginning of the chat, I'm looking at Woke season two. We we'll start checking out checking that out starting um before the weekend, and then next week as well. Netflix, you know, I always got my guilty pleasures. Netflix has a new dating reality show. Oh, yeah, just for you guys. It's called The Ultimatum. When one person in the relationship is ready to get married, but the other one's not. Are they ready to get married or not? Nah? That's all I'll be doing after next week, too. That's it. 
I love it, man. I love it. So, guys, again, Amanda's links are in the bio. Chris's links in the bio. They will be back next week uh, talking more about Moon Knight. And, again, like we said up top, let's get Chris to that 5,000. Let's get Amanda to 600. Let's support the, the community and uh, get them up to uh, continue to grow their awesome community that they're doing a great job at building. So, look. As far as content here, I, I was telling Amanda and Chris, uh, my mind is all over the place. I'm actually mm-hmm. going to be leaving and go see uh, uh, everything uh, everywhere at once or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, seeing that at 7, uh, so expect a review for that. Uh, uh, Morbius uh, later today, Atlanta tomorrow, Severance tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to have to clone. I'm going to have to find my inner yeah, yeah. other person yeah. to go yeah. to see and review these things so yeah it's, it's a fun time and i always love uh talking movies and shows you all so i'm really excited to get that content out for you so hey that is it this is on this wonderful wednesday moon night mcu return i'm so glad to be back with these awesome people i'm so glad that you all are with us can't wait to see you guys next week hope you enjoyed this discussion if you're watching the replay like share comment subscribe to amanda and chris and we'll see you guys on the next video take care everybody yep let's get it